I'm Tina Cheetah, and I'm in Cecil County, Maryland today, chasing down the roots of my great-grandmother's Rita's family. They lived in this area nearly 300 years ago. So behind me is the Cecil County Historical Society. I'm gonna go in and see what we can find out. We are here inside the Cecil County Historical Society where they have over 2,000 books as well as maps and government documents, newspaper clippings, all things pertaining to Cecil County and its residents. They actually have family vertical files on both the Reedus family and the Parsons family, which is important for our journey today because James Reedus is our ancestor who married Catherine Parsons, and they lived in this area in the 1700s. Rita's family researchers have been writing to the Cecil County Historical Society for years, and in this file I found all kinds of answers to those letters going back to all the way back into the 70s, um, basically answering the same question. There are no records that they have of any kind of shipwreck for James Reedus or Catherine Parsons. There's also no record of an indenture or an apprenticeship for James Reedus, I'll call him Junior, their son. The other thing that I did is I spent quite a bit of time today looking through the passenger records because one of the things in the Reedus file is that there are no ship passenger records um, for Reedus. And at the library, the Cecil County Historical Society, they have an entire bookshelf of ship passenger records for the Maryland colonies, for the mid-colonies, for Delaware and Pennsylvania. There's this huge three-volume compendium of ship passengers during colonial time. And I'm sorry to say there's no record of Redis. Um, and I tried four or five different spellings. So one of the really interesting things I found today and was in the abstracts of Cecil County land records. And in this abstract, we find that James Reedus and Catherine Parsons actually were selling 100 acres in the Bohemian Manor. We'll learn a little bit more about that later um, because they are moving. Now, I hadn't seen this in anything else. Now, other family researchers may have, and I don't know what to um, whether to attach very much meaning if they were moving across county or if they were moving, moving. All right, we're in Elkton now. Let's get in the car and I'll tell you a little bit more about what I found out from the Parsons file as we drive from Elkton on down Route 213 through Chesapeake City uh, down to what would have been Bohemian Manor. It's where the Bohemian River and Elk River meet near Port Herman on the map down at the end of that road would have been where Town Point was. Uh, that's important kind of a little bit for our family history. And then we'll travel on down to near Earlville. Earlville is, of course, where the North Sassafras Anglican Parish was. And then that'll conclude our journey. So the Parsons family file actually had quite a bit of information. There was a typewritten copy of his full will, as well as records describing his plantation as being on the east side of the Elk River at Town Point. So now I have a geographic spot that we can go and look at. So if you look here, here's the farmland, and this is what it looks like. Behind this farmland is the Elk River. I'll take you a little bit closer to see what this looks like from the water. One of the more interesting files that I found today was a letter to the Historical Society from a school teacher in Durham City, England. And she wrote in 1971, she had found William Parsons' will, uh, a copy of it that had been filed in England, and actually it in included the entire will um, that included five children. Uh, there was uh, William's child, John, who was living in England. There was uh, William Jr., I'll call them Jr., Mary Jr., Margaret, and of course, our Catherine. And one of the things that, that was a little bit interesting for the time is that he left all five children uh, the house in Old Kingdom, uh, in the Old Kingdom of Old England in Blandford and Dorchester to be sold and divided equally. Now, the law of the land was, of course, um, at the time uh, of colonial Maryland, 
uh, was that your property went to your oldest son if you didn't leave a will. But in this will, he treats all five of his children, his two boys and his three girls, equally. So our next stop is going to be the Anglican Church near Earlville. I learned from the volunteer at the Historical Society that in Colonial Maryland, all marriages, regardless of the couple's faith, were required to be filed with the local Anglican parish. We're standing in front of St. Stephen's Episcopal Church. It used to be nor known as North Sassafras Anglican Church and, and during the 1800s. And this, this place right here, is where Catherine Parsons married my great, 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 a lot of great grandfather, James Reedus, in 1741. One of the things I found out today at the Historical Society is indeed they did get married on December 13th, 1741. Around the bend of the North Sassafras Parish, or St. Stephen's Episcopal Church, is a lovely cemetery. But anybody who knows me knows I'm a little bit spooky. I'm gonna save this and come back another day when it's not the day after Halloween and when I'm not out here in the rain by myself. This house is called the Anchorage and there's a historical marker out in front of it that says that this is the home of the Lusbys. Uh, in the early 1700s, Ruth Lusby and Commodore Jacob Jones married in 1821. Uh, and then they made the Anchorage their home and enlarged it in 1835. But uh, first of all, this was the home of the early Ludsbys, which may have known our Parsons and our Reedises. So this is the northern part of the Chesapeake Bay. In the distance, we can see the lighthouse. It's the Turkey Point Lighthouse where the Elk River, panning this way, where the Elk River feeds into the Chesapeake Bay. This is beautiful country out here. So this is a view that our ancestors may have actually seen on a daily basis for several decades in the 1700s. To borrow a quote from Thomas Jefferson, this scene is worth a voyage across the Atlantic. 